All right, guys, so this is gonna be a new video on the last edition of the 2020 Alpha Romeo 4C Spider. Now, 2019 was the last year of the coupe, 2020 was the last of the, of the Spider, and I did a video on this because two of my friends have these cars a couple of years ago, but I just wanna bring this, uh, revisit this because it's the, my last chance and last opportunity to drive one of these, especially brand new, and I never driven one of these brand new. So just gonna kinda show you guys a little bit about this and the spec. So this car is finished in black. It's got, you know, it's a full carbon fiber tub with front and rear aluminum subframes. You can see here, it's got supercar construction, but we'll get in the car right here. This is what makes this car special. And I talked about a little is, is look at this. This is a full carbon fiber tub, okay? It's a full carbon fiber car, just like a multi-million dollar supercar. And you are able to buy this car for under $100,000. These are carbon fiber fixed buckets. You can see down here, they're fixed on the rails. There's really a little bit of adjustment front and rear on this, but not much. There's no lumbar, there's nothing else. This is as analog as you're gonna get. You have manual steering, there's no power steering. And it's a very, very basic cabin, like I'll show you guys here, okay? There's really the only thing that looks modern is that Alpine CD unit in there, but honestly, that's totally useless. But even it actually has power windows, surprisingly. So this is a lightweight car, it's 2,500 pounds, got 240 horsepower, so it doesn't have 50-50 weight distribution, believe it or not, I think it's 60-40, but you pop the rear engine cover just like this, just like on a Ferrari, and pretty much there is your power plant right there. It's mid-engine mid mounted, you can see more of the carbon fiber structure back there, and you could actually hear the turbo whooshing right behind your head just because of the lack of sound insulation, carpeting, and refinement. So you have a little bit of a storage cubby back here. Uh, not much of a boot, but believe it or not, something that shocked me when I first did the video on the 4C is that this does not open. You have to actually physically unbolt this to open. Surprised why they did it like that, but this would have been really good for storage and also versatility. So this is a toy car. It's not as practical as you would think, but it's damn cool. And this car is available for sale. And I'm gonna grab the window sticker. This car is 75 grand. And like I said, there really are no, op well, you have the 4C Spider package option, but there's really not many options in this car because it pretty much is what it is. And that's what the car is being sold for, so 75 grand. So if anybody out there is interested in this, uh, I'm gonna put the link and the email and everything for Alfa Romeo Maserati of White Plains, New York. I wanna thank them for giving me the opportunity to drive this car today and shoot this video. And also, if anybody out there is interested in this car, this is available. And I would love for somebody out there that watches this channel to pick this up and possibly have a stable mate to their Julia Quadrifoglio or Stavlia Quadrifoglio. So we're gonna get in the car right now, gonna get the camera in, we're gonna go on some roads, and I'm gonna just gonna give you guys a little bit of an updated review as far as what I think of this car, why you would buy it, and why I think it's an absolutely exceptional value because like I said, for under 100 grand, you're not gonna be able to buy any car that's constructed with this level of motorsport technology and engineering. So it's pretty damn cool that Alfa Romeo did this. This was also their first mass-produced car to enter the United States right after they came out with their 8C Competition. So it's pretty cool. So we're gonna get the camera strapped in and we're gonna go for a ride. All right, guys, so now we're in the 2020 4C, and I'll tell you one thing, it feels a lot different than the 2016s that I've driven. And it's gonna be loud in here, so we'll have to bear with me with the audio. We'll do the best we can. But I tell you, this is a fun car. It's a unique car and i would love to have one myself if i had a need for it and i if, if i lived in a different area i'd have this car in my garage already but uh for new york this is definitely not that practical with the roads that we have but i gotta tell you the car is a blast with the manual steering it's light it's sharp it's direct i could feel everything that's going on where i point the nose at this car and you can hear that whoosh of the turbo at 240 horsepower in this little thing. And you feel it, the car's quick. Transmission is uh, mediocre. I'm not a huge fan of the way it is. Uh, we can't get into dynamic mode because the car is just too new, unfortunately. So we're just gonna have to be able to manage as we're managing.
mean, this car is pretty cool. I mean, there's nothing here. There, there's very basic. There's no bells and whistles. This is a miniature carbon fiber supercar. That's really what it is. And this is going to appeal to a certain type of buyer and a certain type of enthusiast like me. But it's cool. It's definitely a cool car. It looks good. It's fast. It's fun. You can toss it around. And I'm telling you, a lot of, like I said, when I drove my friends 2016 a couple of years ago, I was complaining that the car was all over the road. And a lot of people have been complaining about the earlier cars having bad alignments. And in the aftermarket, there's a company that makes suspension blocks, which changes the suspension geometry. And some of you guys out there to have a 4C might have done that. And I would love to drive one of these really, really tweaked and set up. Possibly also with a better set of tires like a Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 or a 4S. I'm not a big fan of the Pirellis that are on here. But, now this sucker moves, man. This thing's a fun little car. And the ride quality, like the spring rates and the shock dampening is really, really good for such a light, small car. And you can hear the wind noise, so it's not a retractable hardtop, you know, spider. So you're gonna start hearing a lot of wind noise in this car. But that's part of the engagement, it's part of the fun. But my God, is it loud in here. <laughs> I'm actually enjoying this. I really am, this is fun. And actually, when I saw this at the dealership, when I did the video on the Maserati Ghibli Trofeo, I didn't think that this car was even gonna be on the, on the dealer lot this long. And I was like, hey, you know, cock the manager. I was like, hey, can I do a video on it? He's like, yeah, it's still here but there's a lot of interest on it. I know a lot of you guys, when I posted it on my IG feed, you're all like, hey, when are you doing that video on the new on the 4C Spider? So here we are. Uh, I finally had the weather cooperating and it's warm enough to, uh, to do it. <laughs> this thing is a blast, total blast. I'm not a fan of the paddles. These small paddles are on the wheel, but the gearbox actually does a pretty good job selecting its own gears right now. And that's kind of like the way I'm leaving it because I'm having a hard time uh, getting accustomed to the power band of this thing. And I had that same problem when I originally drove it. I think it would just take a couple of days of driving it. But we're on some pretty bad roads and it's not throwing me all over the place. I, I'm perfectly composed. I have confidence. I can still feel what the front end is doing at all times. You can see what I'm doing right there. And I just love it. I love the car that it has manual steering. I mean, we're hitting some pretty bad ruts in the road. And it's fun because, you know, a car that has manual steering, you feel everything and that's part of the engagement you know even though it's an automatic type gearbox this is a very very analog car you got to be on your toes driving this thing because uh it doesn't have 50 50 weight distribution and 60 40. it's got a decent amount of power to the weight ratio versus on how much this thing weighs but you know you gotta you gotta drive this car with two hands can't be uh, cruising like this. It's not that type of car. So we're just going to get off over here, try to eliminate some of these speed bumps. Unfortunately, you know, we're in a small little car. Uh, even though I'm in the fixed carbon fiber safe belt bucket and I got really bad back issues I'm not complaining about it I, I just something about the way Alfa Romeo is doing their ergonomics of the seats it just works for my body frame but uh, I could get into other cars with Recaro seats and I'm, I'm like in pain I want to get out of the car after like a minute but and another thing I want to tell you guys about driving this car being that now that I have the 355 when you get into a 355 Ferrari, you feel like you're on the ground. It's very compact. The car really wraps itself around you. And if you get into like an F8 Tributo or any of the newer cars by Ferrari, 
you don't really get that feeling because the cars are so much bigger. They're actually large, and you compare them in size to like my GT350R Shelby. But the Alpha 4C, it has that very small, compact, intimate feel when you're in the cabin. And it feels like you're in an older Ferrari. You, you know, you get the same feeling that, you know, you get when you're in a 308, a 328, a 355. You know, and I kind of like that. It kind of adds a little bit more stimulation to the driving experience. And this road is real busted up right here. They're doing construction. You guys can probably tell in the camera. And I'm not fighting the car. Whereas when I did it a couple years ago, I was struggling to keep the car straight. So I think in the final rendition of this car, either this car has had a proper wheel alignment and the ones that my friends own definitely need some alignment work or they did some little tweaks, you know, in the final version of this car. I've been driving this car all day on some really bad driving roads. And I was a little reluctant when I got in this car today. I was like, I don't know, this is gonna break my back. I'm gonna hate it. But I gotta tell you, this 2020 Spider. I mean, the monocoque is, you know, the, the tub is so stiff. And you got aluminum front and rear subframes, double wishbone suspension in the front. It has a big fierce and strut suspension in the rear. Uh, it just feels good. I'm actually getting into my zone now that I feel comfortable enough to drive this car a little bit more aggressively. I don't know, this is, this is very tempting to uh, put one of these in my stable. I don't know, guys. <laughs> you let me know what you think if I should kick one of these up. I'm tempted. I, I really am. I love this car. I love the look of it. The only thing that I probably would do if I bought one of these, I would probably go down a very big rabbit hole of trying to figure out how to put a manual gearbox in it. That's the only thing I think that would make this thing so much better would be a manual gearbox. And I definitely think it's doable with proper engineering and, and the right resources, I think it could be done. Yeah, man, I'm cruising right now. I'm totally fine. Even though the seat has no uh, no thick bolstering or padding, it fits, it fits me well. I feel like I'm in the 355 Ferrari right now. Like as far as the, the seating position, even though the 355 is much more comfortable as far as the seats and a little bit more room, but what I'm looking at at a window, like the greenhouse effect, I guess you would call it, it's got awesome visibility out of the front and sides. Even the rear, it's it's fine. I don't feel uh, I don't feel claustrophobic. I don't feel like there's a lot of blind spots. Ride quality is awesome, even though it's tight and firm. You know, Alfa Romeo really knows how to dial in the spring rates and the shock valving, especially on a road car. I mean, if you're gonna turn this into a race car, yeah, go get yourself a set of Olin's coilovers or something, you know, custom. But. Yeah, the car feels good. Yeah, I'm cruising. The car also gets a lot of attention. Why? You don't see these cars on the road. They're super rare. Now, when Alfa Romeo came out with this, I think they were destined to make 3,000 or more of these a year. I don't think they ever did that. Uh, this was this was still, I think, a limited run of a car, you know, going back to 2013 when it started to be introduced. But, uh, yeah, it's rare. Really, you know, only people that are diehard Alfa Romeo enthusiasts are going to buy something like this or someone that wants something really unique. You know, maybe they want to have a Ferrari, but they can't afford a Ferrari. This kind of really does give you a lot of that supercar engagement. The carbon fiber tub, you know, the way it's constructed like a real supercar, you're getting it for under a hundred grand. It's just unbelievable. It's unheard of. I don't really think that this car was a profitable car for Alfa Romeo. I think this was born out of the hardcore people at Alfa Romeo, the diehard racers and, and the enthusiasts of the brand. That's where I think the 4C came because when they came out with the 8C Competizione, that really was a rebodied Maserati. It was a beautifully bodied Maserati. You know, the way that car sculpted, still one of the best looking cars ever, ever coming out of Italy is the 8C. Uh, and also the values of those cars have gone through the roof. You know, some of those are going for 350 to $450,000 today. So they've seen a very good increase in investment status. 
because they're rare, they're limited, and it's a very unique car. Even though it doesn't drive like a Ferrari or a certain car of that generation, people still covet the brand and they love that brand, you know, for what they did with the 8C. And I tell you right now, that would be a that would be definitely a dream car to own one day to put in my stable it would be an 8C Competizione and Alfa Rosso with the black carbon fiber buckets. But like I said, you know, these cars are, are unique. And, you know, now that I own my Julia Quadrifoglio for two and a half years, you know, something like this is becoming more enticing for me to buy. You know, just to have another toy. Like, I need more cars in my life, right? But, uh, no, this car is cool. This car is really cool. But... Jesus, this thing freaking pulls, man. And we're not in the most aggressive mode with the throttle and the gearbox because the car is too new. It's still in break-in mode. But I tell you, I'm having a lot of fun with this car today. I tell you, the more I'm driving it, the more seat time I'm getting, the more I want to I want to buy this thing. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Even though it's not an NA motor with a manual gearbox, it's still fun as hell. It's the feedback you're getting through the cabin. You know, the little shutter in the, in the steering wheel because the car is so rigid and tight and it's manual steering. You know, if any of you guys have driven a vintage car, that's what the way they feel, you know? And that's really what this car is all about. It's really down to the basics. There's no navigation or heated seat. There's none of that. This is like down to the basics, Alfa Romeo, you know, modern reinterpretation of a little sports car built with supercar manufacturing techniques and materials. But man, it gets really loud in this cabin. And we'll see how the audio comes out with the mics. In a little while. So guys, that's pretty much it. I'm done with the drive. I've gotten so much more updated feedback on the 4C that I'm gonna pull over. I'm gonna talk to you guys about it because this experience today is completely different than the last time I drove one of these a number of years ago. So thanks again for watching this video. Stay tuned, I'm gonna give you guys my final thoughts on the 4C Spider in a couple of minutes. And before I did this video today, I was a little concerned. I'm like, you know what, is this gonna really mess my back up because I have lower lumbar issues and I have a lot of pinched nerves and stuff like that. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I was bouncing around on all of those roads and I have no driver fatigue whatsoever. Now, when I get into my Shelby GT350R, based on that design of the car, when the rear suspension oscillates and bounces right into my pelvis, I come out of that car in pain almost every time I use it. Very, very surprised. Also, based on the earlier versions of this car that I've driven, this particular 2020 feels like a night and day difference. The suspension geometry, the alignment just feels so much better. The spring and shock dampening feels absolutely superb. For this little car to handle these roads without any creaks and rattles and, you know, bump steer and any of that, I'm totally blown away by it. So, like I said, this is a very special car. They're not making these anymore. So, if anybody out there is interested in a, in a very unique, I call it micro miniature supercar based on the construction, you should really put this car on your radar because this is a very special car. And I think five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road, this is going to be a collectible car. This type of car is going to be non-existent. I'm telling you, in five to 10 years, this is never going to be available You know, from any manufacturer. We don't even know. Everything is going to be possibly EV by then uh, based on government regulations and what we're going to do. But this is a nice two-seater. The top comes off, beautiful stitched leather, incredible styling. You know, the gearbox is not my favorite. I don't love the paddles based on the plastic design. Hopefully somebody in the aftermarket, I don't know, but you guys can go out there and do your own research. Somebody may make upgraded paddle shifters for this car. I do know my friends have the tunes, they have the intakes, they have different exhausts. You can lower it. 
So it does have some aftermarket support, and I think if you tweak this car even a little bit, it could be even better than what it is right now out of the factory. So 75 grand, 2020, black on red, Alfa Romeo 4C Spider is available. So if you guys want it, hit up Alfa Romeo Maserati of White Plains, New York. And I actually, if you do buy the car, I will personally love to meet you and uh, you know even go for a ride as you come pick the car up as well. So thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to the Auto Fanatic channel. There's going to be more drive reviews on the channel as weather and time permits. It's a cool car. This car appeals to me, someone that appreciates the DNA of Alfa Romeo, appreciates what this car is from an engineering perspective. You know, this is a very rare, unique car. And the fact that you could buy something like this today, this is the final opportunity to buy a brand new version, you know, whatever any dealerships in the country have left over for 2020s. That was the last year of the Spider. 2019 was the last year of the Coupe. So I think it's a home run. So if you guys are in the market for something two-seater, mid-engine design, you want something unique that nobody's going to have, you want to have something that's got light, sharp, dynamic manual steering, it just feels very analog, this is the car that's going to be on your radar. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next video soon. Take care, guys.